This is the ground beef cottage pie. I've got the oven going to 375 Fahrenheit, and I'm gonna start off making some um, mashed potatoes, kind of dryish mashed potatoes, some real solid, sturdy mashed potatoes. Um, so peel the potatoes any way you like. This is about um, three pounds. I'm doing one extra potato because I don't mind having leftover mashed potatoes, but um, chunk them up. They don't have to be very small dices. And then you're gonna throw it in some cool water and cover it by about an inch of water. And add a little salt in there for flavor. Cook that for about 10, 12 minutes, um, eight minutes at a simmer. Um, I generally, cook it uncovered once it's boiling, bring it to a boil covered and then uncover it um, until it's tender. Drain it, add some um, butter and some half and half or milk. I use half and half, you could use heavy whipping cream. And um, I add a little bit more butter to taste. Um, but bo mostly I want these potatoes to be drier and not, they don't need to be as fluffy as regular potatoes. They're chunky, they're gonna set on top of the cottage pie filling, so you don't want them to be too runny because otherwise it'll just melt in. All right, so set that aside, let it cool. Um, it's easier if the potato's cool. Next, we're gonna just dice up our vegetables. You can use a frozen diced vegetable mix here. You can use frozen corn. You can put whatever you want in the filling of a cottage pie. It's just about how much your pan can hold. So I've got a couple carrots, I got a couple celery, I got um, uh, an onion. This is, this is about a um, a, maybe a cup and a half of each, a cup and a quarter. It's, it's just an eyeball. You don't have to sweat it too much. Uh, go ahead and um, cut off the root end of the onion. Ch chunk or um, dice that up. Set that aside and then um, minced garlic. And if you don't like garlic, don't add as much. If you like garlic, add, add more. Um, set all of that aside. I put it on a plate so everything is just like one plate, one, one dish plate to go in the dishwasher. Got um, a pan, I'm putting it to medium high heat, adding a little bit of uh, vegetable oil. Uh, you could use olive oil if you like, just something where the oil isn't smoking too much. So I use vegetable oil. So uh, uh, cottage pie is about minced beef. So mince the beef while you're in there. This is a fish spatula, it does a really good job. And I'm going to saute and bake in this um, pan. It's kind of like a rondo pan, so it's got straight sides. It's wide, it's 12 inches. Um, mince up the meat, mince it, you know, really good. It's not like your mama's chunky spaghetti. That's why it's called minced. Um, but you, I mean, you could chunk it too if you, if you don't want to mince it. Um, so cook that for about 10 minutes um, until the beef is done, the vegetables are getting soft, the onions are, you know, translucent. Add in the garlic, cook that for one to two minutes or until it's just fragrant, until you smell it. You don't want it brown or bitter. Um, and then at that point, you're going to stir that all around and add in the tomato paste. I like to add the tomato paste first. You can add a little bit. This is about two tablespoons. You can add a little bit more if you want like a bread looking gravy. Um, doesn't super matter. And then you're gonna like um, fold up in that two tablespoons of flour, all purpose flour, whatever flour. That's gonna make for a little bit of gravy. You're gonna throw in the bay leaf, some fresh or dried thyme and um, the Worcestershire sauce. And that's two and a half tablespoons there. You could go three, you know, taste it, do whatever you like. Um, and then you're slowly gonna stir in the uh, beef broth. That's two cups of beef, beef broth and we're going to simmer that at a very low boil for about 30 minutes or until the gravy is gone. So here you can see this is, this is pretty much done. There's some um, grease in there. You can strain that off if that's too much or you can just fold it in or you can cook it off some more and, and it'll blend in and burn off. Um, remove the bay leaves and then set that aside for about 10 minutes to cool. And when it's cooling, it'll scrape off the rest. If anything is stuck to the pan, it will. you won't have to scrub it. It'll just naturally scrape it off. Um, spread it back out, throw in frozen peas, and these are defrosted. It, it doesn't matter, um, just as long as you get them in there. It's still gonna bake for a little bit longer. And then I like to let that cool just about 10 minutes and then put on the cooled mashed potatoes. So you want this kind of cool because you don't want the gravy um, or the filling seeping into the potatoes. Uh, you don't want the potatoes to melt into it basically. So I put it on a sheet pan to make sure, you know, if it's too full, I don't want to clean my oven. So just put it on a sheet pan and then throw it in. You can put it into a casserole dish if you want. I'm going to leave it right in this uh, pan that I cooked in. 
and bake that at 375 this was for 30 minutes and then I did a light broil on it really watching it carefully um, so that it doesn't burn so watch your broil is what I'm trying to tell you and then I try to cut this in even pieces but I'm no good I let this rest for 30 45 minutes and it's still just sloppy I mean if you want pieces you're gonna have to let it rest for a little bit longer so you know you can just spoon it on there it doesn't have to be pieces and find this recipe at eatsimplefood.com. Thanks.